And the problem is that we, we shelter them way too much and uh, they don't learn how to interact with others. So do the owners have much influence over how their dogs react? They grow up and uh, suddenly it's too late to commit mistakes and uh, walk away scot-free and um, just a bit wiser. And welcome to 10 Minutes with Professor Abranti's special edition for you today. We are taking a request. We got a submission by one of our Ethology Institute group members. We were sent a clip of two dogs showing aggressive behavior with the request for Professor Abranti's to break it down Ethology style. So that is what we're going to do. Let's take a look at the clip and see what the Professor has to say about it. Dogs display aggressive behavior. The gate opens. The intruder displays a clear pacifying behavior. The gate closes. Both dogs resume their aggressive displays. Seeing this clip uh, brings me um, a moment of nostalgia. Um, the clip reminds me too much of a story Professor Lawrence used to tell and uh, published in um, uh, so kam der Mensch auf den Hund in uh, 1949 and uh, the book came in English as Man Meets Dog in 1954 and he writes um, in the book the effects of the flight and the critical distances help explain the behavior of the dog behind the closed and open garden gates the dividing fence is equivalent to a distance of many yards. The animal behind it feels safe and is correspondingly brave. The gate's opening gives the animal the feeling that the foe has suddenly approached that amount near. And that is, by the way, the same mechanism that uh, makes dogs behave uh, differently when uh, meeting other dogs or, or even persons, um, depending on whether they are on a lead uh, close to their owners or, or just uh, roaming freely around. So this is not a case of uninhibited aggression? No, no, it's by no means uninhibited. It's actually quite inhibited. Evolution doesn't favor unrestrained aggression. Fighting is too dangerous and uh, more often than not decreasing one's uh, chances of surviving, uh, reproducing and passing one's genes to the next generation. And therefore animals, including dogs and humans, they um, resort to de facto aggression only when there's absolutely no other way, no other option. Um, a lot of window dressing is fine and more than sufficient most times. There is no need to risk life-threatening altercations. It's like intimidating the other from behind the fence or at a safe distance uh, is enough. Um, but mind you, to do it face to face and uh, close by is uh, far too dangerous. And animals, including dogs and humans, that uh, can't restrain themselves and easily engage in violent fights, they are not typical. Evolution doesn't favor su such uh, strategies. It's, it's, a, it's, it's as simple as that. So in the clip that we watched, when the gates open, the dogs stop. Is that is that the answer? I mean, do we just do we just open the gates? Well, that's a tricky one. But I'm confident nothing disastrous would occur in most circumstances. The question is, um, do we take the risk? Remember that uh, one dog is on home turf and feels safer and uh, more eager to defend it the opponent will be reluctant to invade such a well-defended foreign uh, territory unless it feels very confident that it has the upper hand. So, um, assuming both dogs are typical, 
which means not especially prone to aggressive or fearful behavior, I believe they will quiet down once the gate is open. And um, the intruder will then retreat, and uh, that's it. But um, on the other hand, if the intruder is overly self-confident or boisterous, it may end up in a fight if it crosses the demarcation line. You know, it's, it's difficult to say nowadays because most of our dogs, they didn't grow up in ideal environments where they should have learned the norms of social engagement. Um, puppies, they, they, they must experience conflicts with others so they can learn how to resolve those conflicts. And the problem is that we, we shelter them way too much and uh, they don't learn how to interact with others at an age when a failing behavior strategy doesn't have severe or maybe even fatal consequences. And then they grow up and uh, suddenly it's too late to commit mistakes and uh, walk away scot-free and um, just a bit wiser. Do the owners have much influence over how their dogs react? Oh yes, they most certainly do. Um, look, if the intruder is alone, it will surely keep a low profile or a lower profile. With the owner behind it, um, it will be more daring, especially if the owner incites it, which by the way often uh, happens, owners uh, incite the dogs inadvertently. I see it all the time. The dog barks and the owner tries to calm it down with uh, human phrases like so, so, or take it easy, calm down which means nothing to the dog except that they feel reassured and the human voice functions actually as a, a reinforcement. Let me tell you a story. Once I was walking my two female English Cocker Spaniels in a park when we met a dog and its owner uh, that we had met many times before and um, always with the same result. A dog would bark furiously at mine and my dogs were at the time off lead and uh, they were totally unfazed by the barking. They, didn't really care. So that day I decided to tell the owner, uh, let your dog off the lead. And uh, she looked at me, puzzled, uh, asking, do you mean it? She, she couldn't believe it. Yes, yes, absolutely, I said. So she unclipped the, the lead and um, what do you think happened? Well, nothing. Nothing happened except um, her dog stopped barking and uh, went behind her, between her legs, observing my dogs and me from, uh, well, I guess, the safest uh, spot that it could find. So, um, yes, of course I was ready to step in if it was necessary, but uh, I was confident uh, that, that nothing would happen. Um, I, I'd seen the pair before and they, they struck me as um, the typical example of an insecure owner with an insecure dog uh, displaying aggressive behavior. Uh, because the lead uh, was functioning as an amplifier of those critical and flight distances that Professor Lawrence mentioned. But mind you, I, I'm not saying that you should unconditionally open the gates and, uh, or, or let your dog off lead and, and see what happens. No, not at all, I'm not saying that. I'm just explaining canine behavior and inviting you to ponder. By the way, um, the story I just told you is also um, an excellent example of how dog trainers can and should help dog owners by explaining canine behavior to them in, in, in a correct way. Of course, it presupposes that uh, the dog trainers uh, are knowledgeable, they have a, a bit more in their bags than, than the, the, you know, the old wives' tales and the misconceptions that we see being uh, perpetuated by the social media these days um, because you know most dog owners they they are not bad they are not malicious they they are just astonishingly e ignorant uh, and we need to educate them we need to teach them they want the best for their dogs but they don't know what to do or how to do it uh, and that's why we have this um, online programs that we call uh, knowledge to everyone everywhere and it's also why I, I, I agreed on making these um, 10 minutes uh, series. 
And we're all very glad that you did. And if you, if you would like to get in on that knowledge to everyone everywhere, visit ethology.eu. That's where you will find the courses, the certification programs. You can find free articles. Actually, there's tons of free articles for you to read, videos for you to watch, and even merchandise if you want to get in on that. So thank you to Professor Abrantes. And we will see you next time with another edition of 10 Minutes with Professor Abrantes. 